Good morning, everybody, and welcome. This is Morning with Meg, and uh, we're going to be working with some um, an interesting pose today. It's one of my nemesis poses, or used to be. I've noticed that this week I've been able to kind of um, conquer it emotionally a little bit, and uh, I think that that's something that um, is really important in our practice is to occasionally take up something that is really, really difficult and um, challenging to us and then kind of work our way through it. So today I would invite you to have like a little itty bitty pillow. I'll, I'll show you mine. It's over here in the corner. You can see at the very top of the stack. It's one of those pillows that belongs on the, um, on the couch. I find it really uh, a useful tool as we, you know, get into Asta Vrkasana. Asta Vrkasana is, hey Lauren, good to see you girl. Um, Asta Vrkasana is eight limb staff pose. And uh, it's going to be a pose that we, we try and get into at the end of our practice. But to get there, we have to be really warm in our shoulders and open and also really um, open in our hips. So we'll do a lot of hip work today. Other things that are always helpful are two blocks. So I invite you to take to child's pose this morning. Um, but if that is not a comfortable pose for you, if it really hurts your knees or the back of your knees or the tops of your feet, please feel free to find a place where you can be totally and completely comfortable. What we're gonna do today is really work, um, well, like we do every, time we take to the mat or the meditation cushion is to really work with the um, sensations that come up in the body. Sometimes the breath is a clue about those sensations. Sensations or feelings that come up emotionally or just spiritually, just this sort of existential feeling that we have. We've all gotten very familiar with it in the last three months. I want to read to you a quote from um, somebody that I look to all the time for words of wisdom, Pema Children. She wrote some beautiful books. Actually, they're just transcriptions of her lectures. And um, this book, When Things Fall Apart, I think is a really wonderful one. So let me read you this quote from... Um, from my children as we settle in and find the breath. We hear a lot about the pain of samsara, that's suffering, the pain of suffering. And we also hear of liberation, but we don't hear much about how painful it is to go, to, to go from being completely stuck to becoming unstuck. The process of becoming unstuck requires tremendous bravery because basically we're completely changing the way of perceiving reality, like changing our DNA. We are undoing a pattern that is not just our pattern, it's the human pattern. So today as we settle in, let's just find those places in the body that feels stuck. As we take the child's pose, it might be the backs of the knees or the quads, just a feeling of tightness. It might be this early in the morning, it's hard to completely relax the torso or find space in the spine. Let's just be here for a bit, looking for tight and tired places. Maybe as you breathe, you're finding that the breath is like a salve. It's like medication for those tight or tired places. 
let's find that we are beginning to soothe ourselves. A really important part of becoming human is not only to recognize discomfort, but then to work towards self-soothing, self-compassion. And so I invite you this morning to use self-compassion, this idea of watching for sensation to come up, particularly sensations of discomfort, and then to soothe yourself, to practice self-compassion, to send the breath there, to come out of the pose, to treat yourself like you're the child you love, or maybe there's something else that brought you to the mat this morning, something else you'd like to take away. Whatever it is, let's find that intention, that dedication between the palms of our hands, wherever you are. And we'll breathe very deeply into our whole body, down to the tips of your toes and the crown of your head. And then on exhale, let something go. All right, from here, let's press out into the palms of the hands. So if you're not there already, send your hands out in front of you in your child's pose. And let's really activate through the arms this morning. Really press into the hands and see how broad and strong you can make your back body. You might find that your Head is lifting off of the earth a little bit, just so you can get those shoulder blades active. Deep, full breath in. And on your exhale, let's walk the hands over towards the right side of your mat, feeling a really big pull in the left side body. Just working on spaciousness, that will help us become unstuck. Give it another full deep breath in and out. Inhaling back to center. Once again, activate through the arms, through the hands. Exhaling over to the left hand side. Now feeling the stretch in the right side body. Deep full breath in and out. One more, just like that. And out. Back to center. Let's come up into our table posture and take some big circles into the hips, just round and round. And then opposite direction. Back to neutral pose. So. Knees directly underneath your hip sockets, hands underneath your shoulder blades. On your inhale, drop your belly, lift your chest and chin, gaze comes up. Exhale, round through the spine, gaze at your belly button. Two more times on your own breath. Let's just work with finding the breath, letting it feed and nurture you. Sinking breath up with body motion. And back to neutral spine, bringing your right hand right underneath your lower ribs. So here we are, neutral spine, back is long, deep, full breath in. Exhale, just sink your torso parallel to the earth. Let that shoulder blade come up off of the back. Inhale, press into the palm. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Beautiful. Let's take it on the other side. Left hand underneath the lower ribs. Press into the hand. 
Deep, full breath in. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up. Exhale, lower. See if you can really isolate the motion here to the shoulder blade. And back to neutral spine. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the chest and chin. Exhale, round through the spine, back to your child's pose. Reach your hands out even further. Inhale, all the way up, kneeling posture. Exhale, hands back behind you. Inhale, lift up through the sternum, pinch the shoulder blades together. Exhale, all the way back to your child's pose. Inhale here, hands out, active. Exhaling completely. Inhale, all the way up, kneeling. Exhale, hands back behind you. Inhale, pinch the shoulder blades together, press the tailbone down. Exhaling all the way back. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, hands out in front of you, press through the hands. Next, inhale all the way up, kneeling. Exhale, hands back behind you. Inhale, lengthen through the upper ribs. Exhale, all the way back down, child. Inhale to your table posture. Send your right foot back behind you. Bend it to your knee. Big circles with the knee. See if you can bring that right knee right behind your right elbow. There you go. Big circles. And back to neutral spine. Send your left foot back behind you. Bend into the knee. Again, see if you can bring that knee up towards your left elbow. And once again, table posture. Send your right foot back behind you. Flex into the foot, left hand out in front of you. On your exhale, expand. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, expand. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, expand. Inhale, back to center. Hand down to the earth. Your choice, keep your foot elevated as you come into your modified side plank, lifting your right foot up, your right hand up, or you can bring your foot down to the earth. Deep, full breath here. And out. See if you'd like to take the bind this morning. Binding hand to ankle. Keep your belly engaged, shoulder blades down the back. Let go of the bind, coming all the way back to your table. Send your left foot back behind you and right hand out in front of you. Get solid, exhaling, expand. Inhale back to center, exhale, expand. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, expand. Inhale, back to center. Maybe keeping that foot elevated. Coming into modified side plank on this side. Feel free to drop the foot to the earth. And if you have it in you this morning, maybe the bind. Press into the hand. Keep your belly active. Tone. Release the bind. Everything back to your table. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your chest and chin. Exhale, round through the spine, curl toes under, lift your knees just two inches off of the earth. Next exhale, find your heels coming back to the earth. Lifting tailbone in, up to the sky. Press into your hands. Big, broad back. So think about the space between 
between your shoulder blades. We really want to engage there. Press into your hands. And now a slow walk towards your hands. And once you get to the top of the mat, feel free to grab through those blocks. You can always keep the blocks underneath your hands. That might feel good. You could certainly let your arms dangle. The first forward fold of the day, let's just tune in to places that feel a little stuck this morning. So, and then let's practice self-compassion. A bend into the knees, letting head and neck hang heavy. Let's remember that forward folding is a great opportunity just for us to tune inward emotionally. So that's one of the wonderful things about this practice. We get a, a pause occasionally to take a look inside. Deep, full breath in. And out, let something go. Really deep bend into the knees now. Stack vertebra on top of vertebra all the way up into standing. Head and neck come up last. Inhale, hands high to the sky. Exhale, take a forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale and fold. Send your right foot back behind you and your left follows to your plank. So let's get really solid in the plank. Find a little bit of space between your two toe mounds. Press into your hands, engage into your belly, Engage into the back body. Drop your knees to the earth. Listen carefully. We're going to take Ardha Chaturanga and come right back up to half plank. So on your exhale, elbows straight back. Hover the elbows at your ribcage. Inhale back. Exhale. Childs. Inhale. Curl your toes under long in the spine. Press into the hands. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's try that again. Inhale, roll up into your plank pose. Exhale, full or half Chaturanga Dandasana. Up to your plank or your half plank. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, curling toes under along in the spine. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale your right foot up and back behind you. Bend into the knee this morning. And then bring that knee up to the ceiling, stacking hip on top of hip. Let's bring both shoulders parallel to the earth, parallel to one another. Send that knee up even farther. Let the weight come into your left ankle. Deep, full breath in. And out, back to your downward dog split. So let's crank that right hip point back down to the earth. Knee up into belly, shoulders up over wrists. Hold. Deep, full breath in. And out. Inhale the foot between the hands. Left foot follows. Standing forward fold. Inhale, flat back all the way up and all the way back down. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale and fold. Send your left foot back behind you and your right follows plank. Gather energy. Exhaling full or half, Chaturanga Dandasana. Back to your plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lifting your left foot up and back behind you. Bending into the knee. Stack hip on top of hip. More weight into that right heel. Lift the hip even farther up. Shoulders stay square, both hands balanced. Back to your downward dog split. Really find balance in the hip. Knee up into belly, shoulders up over wrist, hold. Deep, full breath in. And out. Inhale the foot 
between the hands. Other foot follows. Standing forward fold. Inhale all the way up, reach high. Hands together, heart center. Hands to the sides of the body. Let's check in with how we feel in the body. Give yourself a moment. Sometimes we get so engaged in movement that we forget that we are human. We're not machines, right? We need to be able to feel every movement, to let that information come into awakening, liberation. Just not karate chopping through the whole thing, but being there. Understanding, embracing, practice self-compassion. One more full deep breath. Inhale, hands high, sit down into your chair, Utkatasana. Exhale, take a forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale and fold. Send your right foot back behind you and your left follows, plank. This time we'll take the vinyasa, exhaling full or half chaturanga dadasana up into your baby cobra or your upward facing dog. Exhaling back, downward facing dog. Lifting your right foot up and back behind you, pull it through for your high lunge. Now modification here is to drop your left knee to the earth. But once we find high lunge, let's refine a little bit. Give yourself a moment to arrive, to feel what you feel, particularly in the hip. Deep, full breath in. And bringing your hands on your exhale to heart mudra. So pinkies together, thumbs together, open up the middle fingers like a big, beautiful lotus. Let's bring it to your heart center. Really feel that bowl of compassion sitting at your heart. On your next inhale, just drop your left heel to the earth for your warrior two foot pattern. So really get long in your warrior as long as you can. And then straighten out your right knee. From here, on your next inhale, open up your heart and bend back into your knee. On your exhale, bring the bowl of compassion back. Inhale, out, and exhale, back in. This time as you come out, let's see if we can pinch those shoulder blades together, opening the compassion even farther, and then back in. Let's take this on our own breath. time you open, let's find warrior two. So now palms flip down. Let's feel as though we're pressing on a big weight. Engage through the belly. Shoulder blades down the back. Now bring the drishti to gaze over your right middle finger, if that's comfortable in the neck. Deep, full breath in. And out. Now spiral your hands down to the earth. Let's bring them both to the inside of your right foot. Come onto the ball of your left foot and scoot yourself back. Now here's another great place for blocks. For those of us with really tight hips, it might be just finding your way here to blocks. For those of us who want to work a little bit more into the hip, dropping your left knee to the earth. 
just finding a really nice stretch in the left hip flexors. Some of us could even come down to forearms. Let's take the next four breaths here. Again, just looking for things that come up for us, particularly discomfort. And again, finding that you can soothe yourself. Practicing self-compassion, deep love for the warrior that you are. All right, let's come up and frame out the foot. Step yourself back to your downward facing dog. Give yourself a moment of stillness just to feel the differences in the body if there are any. And then I'll leave it to you whether you need your vinyasa here. Remembering the vinyasa is a ritual. We give something or we get something from the mat, from this ritual. Maybe it's part of the practice of self-compassion to do it or not to do it. We'll all meet up in downward facing dog and then lifting left foot up and back behind you. We're going to pull it through for high lunge. Again, feel free to take the low crescent lunge here. Find your way up, high crescent lunge. A moment of observation, just being with self, and then find that bowl of compassion at the heart. Now, inhaling, dropping the foot and opening out for your two. Straighten out your left knee. And on your next inhale, heart reaches out and to the sides, bend back into the knee. Exhaling heart, inhaling open. Exhale, heart. So let's just do this again on our own breath. Just feeling what we need to feel in the body. All right, next time you bend back into the knee, you will find warrior two. Strong in the arms. Feel the spaciousness of the back body, the tone of the front body. And now spiraling hands down to the inside of your left foot. Once again, totally up to you how you practice this pose. Dragon can be lifted and heated. It can be down. Wherever you are, let's just find another four full deep breaths. And then framing out the foot, popping the knee up if it's down, sending it back, downward facing dog. Again, totally your choice. Take your vinyasa or stay in your downward dog. Whatever you need this morning. And then we'll all drop to knees. Take your child's pose or any, any kind of pose that feels good in your body this morning. 
Let's take five full deep resting breaths here. Just allow yourself to come back inside. Take a look around. Maybe thinking of those places that were stuck at the beginning of our practice. See how they're doing now. All right, we'll come back to our downward facing dog. Lifting right leg up and back behind you. Now pull it through for warrior two foot pattern. Rising up, warrior two. Let's make sure that there's a block at the top of the mat. Pressing down into the hands. On your inhale, lengthen through the side body. So reversing warrior. Really, really look, look, look to see if that right knee can stay right over right ankle. And then exhaling, extended side angle. Let's go ahead and use the block. And now left hand up and over. Again, the whole point here is just to feel the energetics of the side bodies, the spiral of the heart to the side wall, the pressing of your knee into upper arm or elbow or wherever it is. Lengthen out, engage. Now coming up, hold on to your block as you do, you do. And we'll take our Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. So when you're ready, just slow, fluid movement, coming into your half moon. So left toes towards the left side wall, maybe coming with your left hand on your left hip. Stay long, long in the right side body, long in the left side body. Engage through the lifted foot. Let's try and find a little buoyancy here with the breath. One more full deep breath in. And then go ahead and leave your block where it is. Come back into your warrior two foot pattern. Spiral your hands down to the mat. And we're going to work our way around so that we're bending into the left knee at the back of the mat. Now, I have some pretty tight hips. So this is my skandasana. You can always lift your uh, heel up off of the earth if that feels good. And I have really bendy joints. So I'm going to try and keep a nice soft bend in my joint rather than really hyper extending into the back of the knee. So really pick yourself up. Find long, tall spine. Feel the engagement here of the inner thighs. Long and strong. All the way back up. Frame out the foot. Plant the left hand, right hand high to the sky. Take a twist, either staying right here in your twist or coming to the blades of both feet, taking your reverse skandasana, feeling a gentle opening here in the hip. Shoulder stacks on top of shoulder, press into the standing hand. Everybody back. Take it back to your downward dog. Your choice about a vinyasa or staying in your downward dog. Let's take three full deep breaths and dive. And now left foot. Up and back behind you. We'll pull it through from warrior two foot pattern. Rising up, warrior two. Once again, we'll find that block to the inside of your left foot. On your inhale, reverse your warrior. 
Keep your left knee tracking over your left ankle. Exhaling, extended side angle. So hand to block, knee tracking into that arm, and your right hand high to the sky. Press into the back foot. Press into the entire left foot. Shoulder blades down the back. Lengthening out with the right hand to the front of the mat. All the way back up. Grab your block as you come up. And we'll take our Ardha Chandrasana from here. On the block, onto the earth. Lifting up into your right foot. Press into the right heel. Oops. Press into the right heel. And find your version of Ardha Chandrasana. With control, back to your warrior two. Spiral your hands down. We're going to come into Skandasana, bend deeply into your right knee. Again, you can lift your right heel up off of the earth. The whole idea here is can we really work into finding some spaciousness in the inner thigh? Spaciousness and strength. Coming back around, frame out the foot, plant the right hand, left hand high to the sky, stay here or take it into your reverse skandasana. Shoulder on top of shoulder, hip on top of hip. Coming all the way back around, back to your downward facing dog. Everybody drop your knees to the earth and seat to heels, child pose. Give yourself two more full deep breaths here. Maybe wide legged child feels pretty good. Back to your downward facing dog, lifting right foot up and back behind you. Stack hip on top of hip, open out towards the sidewalk. Deep, full breath in, square off the shoulders, lift the knee. Back to your downward dog, split, next inhale. And now bring the knee behind your right wrist for pigeon. So if this is not your hip opener, please feel free to take another hip opener. For those of us who like pigeon, let's curl the back toes under and move, move, move into this posture. Maybe using that block now underneath your right hip, just so we feel some solidity in this pose as we open. Deep, full breath in. Exhale, go ahead and release completely into the posture. Now, for those of us who are not uh, enjoying this pigeon, we can always come to the back body and take your right ankle on top of your left knee. Maybe even grabbing for the left thigh. Wherever you are, Let's just really engage the breath. Look for places of discomfort. Send the breath there. Nurture yourself.
Five more full deep breaths. Again, find that full compassion. Dip into it. Find the compassion like a salve when you need it. So after your fifth breath, let's come up from your pigeon onto your right flank and then draw your left foot up and over. So we're going to set ourselves up here for a little bit of a twist. When I do that, because of my body, I feel imbalance in my pelvis. So I always sort of straighten out the lower leg. That way I can really find this leg engaged, both sit bones on the earth, and bring my big toe mound into the earth. From here, let's all just grab onto our knee first. Pull the knee into your belly. Press into that foot, the left foot. Straighten out through the spine. Now we'll take a twist. But let's not crank our body. Okay, let's not practice violence on our body. Let's just be with the body. Allow the body to find the twist with the muscles. Each exhale, there might be just a little bit more of a deeper twist. Maybe you can find your gaze back behind you, really twisting into the cervical spine as well. And then let's come all the way back around. Find yourself a little counter twist. And crossing your ankles, let's come to our downward facing dog. Again, pedaling out, finding what shifts have happened in the body from that little bit of practice. Lifting your left foot up and back behind you, once again, stacking hip on top of hip, squaring off the shoulders, lifting the knee high to the sky, and then bringing the knee directly behind your left wrist and using your back toes to get all the way back into your pigeon. Feel free to lengthen out through the crown of the head and then fold it forward or find any position on the, on the um, inner hip opener that you need. more full deep breaths. And then we'll come on up, moving the props from underneath you onto your left flank, swing your knee up and over and over, press into that foot. Again, this is kind of my shape, just so I can feel planted, and that my big toe mound can make it in. Sit up tall. Now, find your way into this twist. Again, we could find the way in the twist without even using the hands. We don't want to crank. We just want to let the body express the twist. And coming all the way back around, a counter twist. 
Chaturanga will come into a wide-legged kind of situation here. Let's grab for that little pillow that I was talking about at the top of the at the top of the class. But let's find a wide-legged position, but this time let's keep a bend into the knees. And it might not be as wide as we usually do in our forward fold. Keeping that big wide V, but a bend into the knees. Now hold on to your ankles or your shins, and then let's just tilt our uh, pelvis to the back, our, our, our pelvis forward, our tailbone back. Stay long and neutral in the spine, shoulder blades down the back. From here, maybe you can find your elbows at the inside of your thighs and your hands kind of tracking their way underneath your knees. Now with my hips, this is about where I go. All right, you might find that you can get all the way down to the earth and snake your hands back behind you a bit. So if you can, the whole, you know, this is Kamasana, this is tortoise pose. So if you're pretty open, you might be able to find your torso on the floor and your hands binding behind you at your sacrum. Sometimes you need like a, a prop. Can somebody be handy prop? You still need this well. All right, wherever you are, let's take another two full deep breaths, just feeling what we feel. And then let's come on up. Go ahead and bend into your right leg. And let's cradle the left leg up. Now, it could be a cradle like this. We're sitting on the sit bones, we're sitting up tall and maybe moving that knee back to the wall behind. You might find that you could hold your leg like a firewall or like a baby. <laughs> Wherever you are, the whole idea is don't round, stay tall and stay plugged into the sit bones. Just finding a little bit more juiciness in that. All right, so from here, take that little pillow, let's slide it under just the right sit bone. And then we'll find that we have the foot, the left leg in our hand, the left foot in our hand. We're gonna bring the left hand down to the mat. Now, first phase of Asta Vrakasana is just to kind of feel the pinching of your upper arm and the making of your chaturanga arm on your left hand side. All right, so I kind of like to lean forward. From here, bringing both feet together, I like to kind of walk them out. Now I'm going to have to find chaturanga arm here on my other side. So walk them out and then kiss the earth, which I can't do today. Squeeze on your arms. So you're supposed to be lifting up off of the pillow. I can't do that right now. <laughs> All right, let's try it on the other side now. Okay, if you're in your Asana Prasana, please feel free to stay there and have a good time with it. Let's try it on this side. So, here we are, bend into the left leg, right foot out. Did you see with that right hip? Experiment with different ways to bind here, right? Sit up tall, find your baby. Now, pillow underneath the left sit bone. We will find that bind again with, it's kind of, I call like, you wear your uh, leg like a backpack. 
<laughs> right? So squeeze on that upper arm. Let's see if we can make some chaturanga arms here. Yeah, to make yourself a big shelf for that thigh. Now, bring your feet kind of together and squeeze on your arm and find your way up off of that pillow. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze up off the pillow. Beautiful, everybody. Ah! <laughs> I love Aston Lacoste. Actually, as you remember, this is a nemesis pose for me. I really have to be open and, and very tight hips. Lots of stuff comes up for me about what I can and can't do. The narrative that I have to kind of deal with in my body, in my uh, internal um, processing, it's pretty overwhelming. But we really just need to remember that this practice on the mat has nothing to do with being able to do these poses. It has everything to do with being able to deal with the discomfort that comes up. Body, emotion, spirit, all right, from here, go ahead and bring your um, feet into your butterfly pose, and then let's just relax, okay? Here, sometimes I like to use my blocks as a head holder, so binding my blocks right on the inside of my feet, and then my forehead on the blocks. If you'd like to continue to play with Masana, tortoise pose, you know, you can even bring your hands or your forearms down to the floor. Let's take a good eight full deep resting breaths here. If this is just not comfortable for you, anywhere that's comfortable. All right, coming all the way up. Let's find our way down to the back. You can bring a, a block with you. Now, if shoulder stand is in your practice, please feel free to come into your shoulder stand. For those of us with cervical neck issues, with glaucoma, or um, any kind of heart arrhythmia, let's just make sure that we take our uh, waterfall pose. So all the way onto your back. We can either take a bridge pose here, lifting up into your hips, maybe binding your hands, really feeling strength in the inner thighs, or you could slip a block underneath your sacral spine, one of my favorite ways to end the class. If you have a wall nearby, you can always do this at the wall. But here again, just Filling up that bowl of compassion. Feel the energy coming all the way from the heavens, swirling around the heart, soothing the mind. Those of us in shoulder stand, go ahead, maybe taking your halasana, plow pose. Using your belly to get there, plant your balls of your feet back behind you, lengthen out through the back of your legs. 
And then use your belly to come all the way out. Everybody, let's come out of our poses, our inversion. And then we'll take our counter pose for this, which is we're going to come back up onto our sit bones, hands back behind you, elbows onto the earth. So once again, we sort of feel the pinching of the shoulder blades down the back body to the crown of your head. So from here, just either letting your legs relax or you could point your toes and send your toes back up to the sky once again. Whatever feels good, let's really engage one more time through the heart. Breathe and lift. And then slowly down to your back. Ending today with a happy baby, grabbing for the inside of your feet and then rocking side to side. And then to your Shavasana. So if there are any kind of moves that you need to make here, a supine twist, you're free. But as we move into our Shavasana today, allowing yourself just to fully relax to the mat. Before we relax, and we're still kind of conscious of where we are and what we're doing, one more body scan. One more moment. You know, figuring out where you feel tight or tired. Labeling these places, but let's steer clear of judgment. Once you've sort of been with your body, visited it, let's just allow ourselves to completely relax. Shavasana. One more quote from Emma Children as we settle in. The most fundamental aggression to ourselves, the most fundamental harm we can do to ourselves, is to remain ignorant by not having the courage and respect to look at ourselves honestly and gently. So today, you've practiced that, being with yourself as you are, practicing self-compassion, giving yourself some love, treating yourself gently. So thank you for that. Settle in. Have a great rest. I look so forward to seeing you next Wednesday at 8 o'clock. And if you have anything that you'd like to tell me, please feel free to look me up on my website, lostandfoundyoga.com. Leave me a message there. Happy to return you, uh, return the message and, and have a conversation. If you like this video, please definitely give it a thumbs up and share it with friends. I do it for our community and I'm always happy to do that. Thank you so much. Oh, Ruby, you were there. <laughs> so good to see you, Ruby. We're making this a weekly date, aren't we? All right, everybody. Namaste.